Wing Commander, developed and published by Origin Systems in 1990 for MS-DOS PCs. This is one of those legends of computer gaming that set the standard for an entire subgenre, that being spaceship combat simulation. Sure, there were plenty of space games and combat flight sims prior to this, from Starflight's cosmic exploration and trading to Microprose's real-world air combat excursions. But it was Wing Commander and its particular blend of action-focused gameplay and cinematic presentation that cemented what this type of game would feel like for years to come. This resulted in an array of sequels, spin-offs, and competitors that culminated in a market oversaturated with space combat games that were arguably too complex for their own good, with the genre reaching a plateau by the late 90s and languishing until the 2010s. In both cases, it was developer Chris Roberts that tossed rocket fuel onto the space game flame, with him manning the helm on both Wing Commander and its spiritual successor Star Citizen. Although, let's be fair, he also directed the 1999 Wing Commander movie with Freddie Prinze Jr. Hmm, on second thought, maybe that's what killed space flight games back then. Anyway, Wing Commander came in a pretty stellar package, with cover art precisely evoking the mood of the game. Sci-fi stuff exploding in front of you in a cockpit. This is the so-called special promotional release here, although the only thing special about it is that it was a secondary print run sold at stores like Costco. There's also the Blue Box Deluxe Edition, which is a compilation featuring both of the Secret Missions expansion packs. In either case, though, you get a fantastic amount of old-school goodies inside, starting with the game itself on either 5 quarter inch or 3 half inch floppy disks, and if you got the wrong kind, you could just send in this form to swap them out. You also got a registration card, an Origin product catalog with the expected crapload of Ultima games, a couple reference sheets and manual addendums, four generously sized spaceship blueprints that fold out into sweet freaking posters, and a 48-page instruction manual in the form of an in-universe Claw Marks magazine. Even without the game, these things are worth the price of admission alone. Ah, how I miss the 90s. At least in terms of all the cool crap you got with PC games and not like, I don't know, bowl cuts. There's also this amazing piece in my copy, with revolver clip art and the DOS command for defragging the hard drive. Or my bad, def raging. Yeah, someone was definitely raging when they printed this out if the gun is in the indication. Speaking of rage, getting Wing Commander to run correctly can be a bit of an ordeal. You'll need a moderately spec 386 with expanded memory to access all the animations and get a decent frame rate, but you can't go too fast or else the game just flips out. I had to disable the cache on my 66 MHz 486 to get it running well, and even on DOSBox it's still not perfect, even when using finely tuned CPU cycles, although around 3, 3.5,000 seems to work pretty well. But it's worth the hassle to get it sorted, because man, Wing Commander really stands out among its peers from 1990, starting with this intro. Wing Commander does not waste any time letting you know it means business in the cinematic presentation department. You begin by losing this arcade game slash training sim, a clever way to have you input your player name and call sign. You then find yourself aboard a Terran Confederation strike carrier known as the Tiger's Claw. In a bit of point-and-click adventuriness, you're free to talk to the bartender and any patrons in the room to make some introductions and catch up on space gossip, or ignore them and wander around the ship admiring the scenery. These 27th century luxury accommodations also act as the main menu where you'll check your stats, exit to DOS, start a scenario, or save and load your game. I especially love the save system where you click these bunks to place a sleeping pilot and then you wake them up to load a game. It's the little things, you know? But the big stuff is where the game really begins, like these animated briefings before each mission. And while there's no voice acting in this version, this intro sequence still absolutely psychs me up. Ready to command some wings! And what better way to do that than with the 1991 Thrustmaster Flight Control System, which just feels right with a game like this. 
With your stick firmly gripped, you're given free reign with what to do next, but there's a tutorial for the first mission included in the box if you need guidance. The majority of the 40 missions begin with you and a wingman departing the Tiger's Claw and a set of navigation points to navigate to, point by point. You can either fly there manually or lock onto them using the nav computer and use autopilot, which acts as a fast travel mode and also gives you this sweet 3D flyby. Well, as 3D as it can manage anyway, since the whole game uses 2D imagery and scaling to simulate depth. Before long, you'll run into some kind of resistance, often things like asteroids, minefields, or enemy ships. The main enemy in the game are known as the Kilrathi, a species of bipedal feline alien warriors that could really use some catnip or something because they're pissed. There are a variety of vessels you'll come up against, each of which will often fight to the death regardless of their own equipment or size. Sometimes it's just you and your partner you'll have to keep up with and provide orders to, other times you'll have weaponless transport vessels to defend. Either way, man, when it's time to throw down it gets intense, especially when you consider as contemporaries. Just compare the experience to something like Lightspeed, which released the same year. And then comes Wing Commander, with its theatrical flair and grandiose George Sanger soundtrack that sounds great on the ad-lib and MT32 alike. Granted, these are two very different space games at their core, but the point I'm trying to make is that Wing Commander was truly ahead of the curve overall. Seeing as this predates the Star Wars X-Wing and TIE Fighter games by several years, I think it's safe to say that Wing Commander was a landmark in space combat. It might be a bit primitive now with its weird scaling sprites inelegantly rotating in your face, but that doesn't stop the adrenaline rush from kicking in when you've locked onto one of those hairballs and fired a heat-seeking missile up their butt. And it really doubles down on those moments with a control scheme that's very playable with a simple two-button joystick or mouse. Most of the ship's controls are delegated to the keyboard, of course, but even those are pretty minimal compared to later space combat sims. There aren't even any loadouts or upgrades or anything like that to worry about, since the game takes care of that stuff for you by providing different ships for different missions. It's still effective in making you feel like an amazing space pilot, but the actual combat and space flight stuff is a bit rudimentary when it comes down to it. In fact, it's the stuff in between the action that keeps me engaged the most. Once you've fulfilled your objectives and make it back to base, you relay the outcome of your mission to your superior and then are given a speech by them about how you performed and what to do next. Sometimes you'll be sent back to your quarters, sometimes you'll be reassigned. Other times you'll be given a promotion or a medal in recognition of your performance. There's even a set of events that unfold if you eject and lose your ship, with the missions and storyline shifting its narrative as the result of each of these actions. In terms of helping you feel like you're actually making a mark on this universe, Wing Commander does a lot for a game of this time. It does its best to make sure it doesn't feel like a series of loosely connected skirmishes, but instead you're a guy rising through the ranks while making a difference one way or another. Characters are growing, conflicting, and dying, and not following orders all along the way, and combined with the ever-changing technology you're encountering, it does a bang-up job of keeping the story moving forward. And it's not always easy either. In the later missions, and especially the secret missions, death is a pretty constant possibility. For me, it tends to reach a point of frustration later on, and I quickly tire of replaying the same mission over and over, just to die at the same point 20 minutes in. A lot of that is due to my own lack of time these days, but when Wing Commander was a new and fresh experience, that kind of difficulty wall might have been more forgivable. It was certainly forgivable enough for Wing Commander to receive a number of ports and updates over the years on systems like the Commodore Amiga, Super Nintendo, and Sega CD. Then there was Super Wing Commander, a 1994 remake that featured a substantial audiovisual update of the game for the 3DO and Macintosh systems. Pretty awesome stuff in a way, but I don't know, it's still kind of weird to me that they completely changed the characteristics of so many of the ships and characters. Still, Wing Commander in all its various forms is something that's a lot of fun to go back to from time to time, and cherish its high points and its quirks alike. It may not be the most advanced combat space thing of its kind, but it's a trendsetter that remains rather timeless in my opinion. 
It's also currently sold digitally on services like GOG and Origin, so if shooting evil space cats with lasers sounds like a good time, then why not grab your stick and dive into Wing Commander and have some fun? <laughs> And if you enjoyed this episode of LGR, then awesome! Perhaps you'd like to see some of these others. There's new videos every Monday and Friday, and if you would like to see them early, you can support the show on Patreon. And as per usual, thank you very much for watching LGR.